Hey, it's Nick, and today I'm going to talk about this, the new Apple Silicon MacBook Air, and the Apple Silicon Macs in general. I couldn't help myself, and I got one of these, even though I had a perfectly functional 16-inch MacBook Pro that I love. Um, I succumbed to reading and watching all the reviews talking about how awesome these new computers are, and I just really wanted to see how awesome it is. And spoiler alert, it is really awesome. Its the battery is insane, and it's really fast, and pretty much, pretty much all of it's true. So if you're in the market for a new small Mac, basically just go get one of these new ones, they're great. The model that I bought is the base model, which is the 8 gigs of RAM and 256 storage MacBook Air. And that's the lowest end model that Apple makes, and it's the cheapest laptop that Apple makes. So again, I would never really buy this as a main machine. If this is gonna be your only machine for doing photo work, if possible, I would try to buy a higher end machine, at least get 16 gigs of RAM. But just for fun, I thought I would see what it was like using apps like Capture One and Photoshop, which are my two main apps I use for photo work, and see how well they run on these computers. So a short little disclaimer first, this video is being recorded in November 2020, late November, and Photoshop and Capture One have both not been recompiled yet for ARM-based Macs, which means that they're running under the Rosetta translation layer, and that means they still work, and they pretty much work flawlessly but they're not going to be as fast as if they were natively compiled for these computers. Now both of those companies I think have versions coming, uh, I know Adobe said the new version of Photoshop for these computers is going to be released early next year, 2021 I think, and I'm not sure when the next version of Capture One is going to have support for these CPUs, but I would guess sooner than later. Um, they have a lot of people using Macs and people are going to want it to be compatible, so I'm not really worried about that. So let's just jump in here to Capture One. And as of the recording of this video, this is the current version of Capture One. And I'm using RAW files from my GFX 100, which is the 100 megapixel Fuji camera. And the files are awesome, but the camera's also kind of a beast and these files are really big. So I made a test session here with about 200 of them. And you can see, I'm gonna scroll around here and I'm gonna make some adjustments. I'm gonna go through these photos and just kind of check out the interface. And you can see it's pretty fluid. I was really kind of surprised when I did this. I wasn't really sure what to expect. Um, I hadn't read a lot about Capture One being used on these computers, and I'm pretty impressed. I think this is pretty fluid, and I would say it's similar to using a high-end MacBook Pro. My 8-core 16-inch uh, MacBook Pro works about this fast. Now, the one thing I did notice, maybe a little bit of lag on here, was when you click into 100% to check out the detail, it is a little bit slow to render. It takes maybe a second or two or three, depending um, on what adjustments you've made, but I would say this is definitely still usable, and it's not worlds different from my big MacBook Pro, and that's really impressive to me. So I'm really enthusiastic about this computer because this is the lowest end Apple Silicon computer they're gonna make, and this is the slowest those are gonna be, and they're only gonna get faster from here. You know, they're gonna release more MacBooks and more iMacs and a Mac Pro eventually, and those things are gonna leave this behind in the dust. So I can only imagine how fast those are gonna be if this is already so good. And especially too, once uh, they update Capture One for these computers, it's gonna go even faster. So I would say, if you're using Capture One, maybe give it a try. You know, I wouldn't say go out and buy a MacBook Air because that's not really designed for photo work, but for a desktop, you could use the new M1 Mac Mini and probably get a lot of work done, or the small MacBook Pro if you like having a small computer. One other thing that can be a little bit slow is the exporting your images. Once you've made all your adjustments here, you go to export and process your photos into files that you wanna edit later or be done with. And I've selected some files here, and if I press process, I can now wait for these to process. And you'll notice this is the first time we've really had to wait for anything on this computer. Um, it's not instant, and that's fine. Again, these are 16-bit TIFF files from 100 megapixel medium format raw files. So this is kind of a stress test. This is not just, um, you know, your small kind of pocket camera. This is like higher end raw files. And for that, I think it's totally acceptable. I would say that for a MacBook Air, this is super impressive. I would never recommend a MacBook Air immediately as your first computer for processing photos, but if this is all you have, you're gonna to be totally fine. You know, most people aren't using these beefy RAW files, and I bet you if you're using a 20 to 40 megapixel camera, this is gonna be even faster and even better to use. And the second app I'm gonna talk about today is of course Photoshop. And there's been a lot written and recorded and talked about when it comes to Photoshop on these computers. And I echo pretty much everything that I've seen, saying that it's very usable, almost surprisingly so, and some things are a little faster feeling than using a Intel-based Mac, and some things might feel slightly slower. 
So now that we're loaded into Photoshop here, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, gonna make some edits, gonna take a few things out of the background with a healing brush. And overall, this is pretty smooth. I would say that the performance overall scrolling and zooming and stuff isn't quite as smooth as Capture One is, but it's usable. And again, these are really large files and this is a really base model <laughs> configuration of the MacBook. So this is sort of a stress test and it's doing pretty well. Um, I'm not gonna test with a huge composite or a document with many, many, many layers because that's not what I would be using this computer for. I'm, you know, I'm not gonna use or recommend a base model MacBook Air to edit huge files and do massive compositing because that's just not what, you know, it's not the right tool for the job. But if you're somebody who wants to just use this as a sort of satellite computer, maybe make some edits to photos on the go uh, once we can go places again, then this is gonna be a great choice. You can see now if I open up a bunch of images at once, this is where it kind of slows down. And that probably is attributable to the 8 gigs of RAM in this machine and these massive image files. So there's only so much that you can do with that little RAM. But it's still, once they're all open, you can still go between them and work pretty decently. The scrolling becomes a little choppier, which isn't great, but it's definitely still workable. And again, this is a MacBook Air, so if this was what I was, my actual computer I was using to get some job done right now, I would probably not be opening all of them at once, or I would be using a lower resolution camera, or maybe there are film scans or something from a wedding, which wouldn't be big at all. So it's kind of rare that I would be opening a bunch of these 100 megapixel files at once in Photoshop on this computer. But if you have to, you know that this is probably still gonna work. And like I said, the native version of Photoshop is gonna make this faster. So for now, usable, a little slow when you're opening tons of massive files, but for a single large file or for many smaller files, you're probably gonna be fine. So far in my use, I haven't run into any really game-changing bugs. Um, it's all pretty much worked as I expected. This is not a workstation by any means, but for them to be, to be working as well as they are on this computer is pretty awesome. So if you have, happen to have one of the new M1 Macs, um, I would say Photoshop is usable, Capture One's very usable, and they're only gonna get better, at, they're only gonna get better through time as they're updated. So it's an exciting time to be a Mac user. Um, I'm really excited about these computers. Thanks for watching this, and I hope it gave you some insight onto how these apps run.